Hey guys, welcome back to another Mass Effect 2 walkthrough guide uh, where I'm picking sections of the game that are particularly hard or challenging and doing walkthroughs of them. Today, we are doing a user request. Uh, this was requested by user Mark Shepard on YouTube. Uh, he wanted to see me do the collectorship opening segment with the platforms, which is notorious for being one of the most challenging sections in an already challenging mission. So let's break it down. So the main challenges are going to be number one, the two scions that are rotating around you on platforms. Then number two is going to be Harbinger, who you've already faced before on Horizon up to this point, but this is going to be even more difficult because Harbinger is going to be appearing next to you at point blank range. Number three, you're going to be dealing with collectors, lots of them, showing up on the platforms. So that's going to be the third challenge. And of course, all of this is kind of wrapped up in the main, in the overall difficulty of this section, which is that you're stuck on a platform with very limited cover and very limited room to maneuver. Uh, so let's get into it. We'll go step by step down uh, what our, our solutions to these challenges are going to be. So the solution to the Scions is going to be, in general, you need to pick the correct cover. You need to stand in the right place. Number two, to deal with Harbinger, you're going to need to bring Kasumi as one of your squad mates. And uh, number three, for dealing with the Collectors, you're going to need to bring a heavy weapon. And in this case, the right heavy weapon. And if you've seen my last video on how to do Garrus's Garage, uh, during his recruitment mission, you'll know that I already consider the best heavy weapon in the game to be the M622 Avalanche. Uh, you can use other heavy weapons and succeed, but uh, in my humble opinion, the Avalanche is by far the optimal choice for this. Before you start the Collectorship mission, I would definitely recommend, if you've, you haven't before, go to the Mass Effect wiki and read their guide on the Collectorship. Uh, it's definitely got a comprehensive amount of information on the things you need to consider before starting the Collectorship mission, uh, the build-up to it, what missions to do before it, and basically how the mission triggers work and uh, all of that. So that's helpful to read. Um, but what I would add to that is make sure that before you do this mission, you have the Hard Shields upgrade unlocked uh, in the Normandy Tech Lab. And the Hard Shields upgrade basically grants you 20% stronger shields. And that's a very, very important upgrade to have for this mission because you're going to be taking a lot of fire from a lot of enemies at close ranges at several points during this mission. Scions, the Praetorian, Collectors, Harbinger, and they're all going to be coming at you uh, sometimes at close quarters. Two, like I said, we're going to be needing Kasumi for this mission, but specifically Kasumi's flashbang power. Uh, and her flashbang power is unlocked after doing her loyalty mission in the Kasumi DLC. And that's flashbang grenade, and uh, you're going to want that power as maximized as possible. Number three, you're going to want an anti-armor ammo power because you want to be able to have your ammo be as efficient as possible and you want to be able to kill armored opponents like Harbinger, like Scions, as fast as possible. Whether it's incendiary ammo, warp ammo, or armor piercing ammo, you're going to be wanting an ammo power. However you can get that. In this situation, I'll be playing the Vanguard because Mark Shepard did request that I play the Vanguard. And uh, the Vanguard is a great class to, to use uh, in Insanity Difficulty because it comes with its own anti-armor power native to its kit, which is incendiary ammo. And uh, just a note on that, always make sure you evolve the individual ammo power as much as you can. Don't worry about the squad evolution at level 4. Always get Inferno ammo or Tungsten ammo or whatever is the highest possible damage because in missions like the Collectorship and other difficult missions in Mass Effect 2, Shepard, you, the player, are doing the heavy lifting in terms of weapon damage. So don't worry too much about giving your squad your ammo power if they don't have one. Number four, make sure you have the avalanche and that you bring it along. And number five, in terms of your squad mates, aside from Kasumi, whoever your second squad mate is going to be, try and make sure they have crowd control abilities. So that's disabling abilities like biotics, like pull, throw, Okay, so now we can uh, get into the actual gameplay here. Alright, now you will see here, before we go any further, that my bonus power here as the Vanguard is Barrier, which I trigger. The reason I take Barrier is, like I said before, you're going to be taking a lot of fire in this mission. So having the ability to take some fire without getting immediately bursted down and killed is going to be very important. Alright, so getting into the mission here. You see that I skip through all the dialogue as fast as possible. There's a gameplay reason for that. That's so that I don't waste any duration on the barrier, which does run during the cutscenes and the dialogue. You'll see that I order both squad mates to take cover 
in this middle section right here and not on any of the side segments of this cover that's right in front of you. And the reason I do that is because squad mates I've discovered through trial and error do not take as much damage from the scions if you keep them in that middle segment of this sort of three segment cover that's right in front of you to start this, this mission. And then where I go, and you can see that I take out the avalanche immediately, is right here. And this place right here is where you're going to be wanting to stay for the majority of this battle. The important thing to take away from this is one, make sure that you as shepherds stay here and that your squad mates aren't here. For the longest time, I would do what the game seems to encourage you to do, which is to take cover immediately in that bit of cover behind where I'm standing right now, along with your squad mates. And this is actually a death trap because your squad mates can and will get hit by Scion shockwaves and then that splash damage will then hit you. It will hit Shepard if you're standing next to them. So don't do that. I have found that this cover right here is the best place to stay as Shepard. The Scion Shockwaves really generally don't hit you when you're in this position right here, as long as you're crouched down. So moving forward. Uh, the general combat advice in this section is to use the Avalanche and just freeze the Collectors. Just spam that shit and knock them out. Now here I am kind of a little stingy because I almost lost my shield and I wanted to keep it up. So that didn't happen. I had Thane knock the barrier down on the Collector Guardian and then lifted him with my pull. And then he dies. Uh, now we see that Harbinger has spawned from one of the Collectors. And here's where Kasumi comes into play. Hit him with Flashbang Grenade. And he's disabled. In case you didn't already know, Flashbang Grenade completely disables and neutralizes Harbinger. Flashbang Grenade disables biotic abilities on targets that you hit with it. Even if that target still has a barrier or protection like armor, which Harbinger has. And Harbinger's attacks are all biotic. He has his warp attack and he has his singularity that knocks you out of cover. And he can't use either one for the duration of Flashbang Grenade's disable. And if you have Flashbang upgraded to its maximum duration, you can basically keep Harbinger completely neutralized indefinitely. And that is why Kasumi is so invaluable in this mission. You know, if you're like me and you figure this out after a long time of playing this game, you kind of feel like an idiot because before you understood that Kasumi is the ultimate counter to Harbinger, uh, you probably got your ass kicked a number of times by him. And that's another reason why people find this section so hard. But hey, guess what? Kasumi's the key. She's the cheat code for this. As you can see, Harbinger is not able to attack. He just kind of walks up to you derpily and you can take him out at your leisure. Can even punch him to death. All right, here I'm just looking for ammo and making sure the other collectors are dead. Now you can see I'm not getting hit by the Scion. Even when I poke out, I don't get hit, which is kind of luck. You want to be careful about that, though. And all right, here comes a platform with another Scion on it, or actually more collectors on it. Excuse me. And same deal. Just freeze them all. Now the shots on the Avalanche do arc a bit. So it takes a little bit of practice to learn how to aim it, but actually that helps you hit them in general, so I like that. That's the other nice thing about the Avalanche. It's got a ton of ammo, so do not be afraid. At this point in the game, you should have enough ammo capacity with heavy weapons that you can freely spam this. There's enough power cell pickups in this mission alone for you to be almost completely full again by the end of the mission, uh, even if you use heavy weapon ammo freely here, so do not be stingy with it. All right, now the second Scion has touched down and Harbinger's there, you see, but he's already disabled, so he's really not a threat. Whereas normally, you don't want to ever see a, a Harbinger in your face like this, but as you can see, Kasumi makes a mockery of him. All right, now I brave the Scion fire for a moment to go out here and kill any remaining collectors, then I hide here and do as much damage to this Scion as possible. Now you'll see here there's another platform touching down here that has the final group of Collector's soldiers on board. This is the final wave of Collector's, and you'll hear Kasumi or any of your squad mates say, how many of these guys are there, or something to that effect, which makes lets you know that this is the last, last group of enemies. This last platform with the final group of Collector's is only triggered when one of the Scions dies. One of the two Scions dies. And uh, what actually happened is, you didn't see this on screen, but the other Scion was kind of weak and my squad mates finished it off. Now another thing to note here is you see how Kasumi's in the red? And that's probably because she got hit by a Scion. It is something to watch out for. Your squad mates can and do get hit by the Scions and they can get killed even where you keep them in cover. 
either from the scions or from the collectors or a combination of the two. So keep an eye on that. And we'll go over this at the end here. All right, same deal. Get the avalanche and uh, hit, hit these guys while they're all still clustered up. You'll see that my shield goes down almost instantly because I got hit by a scion shot when I popped out of cover. And I metagel immediately. Always metagel in this situation, even though I could use barrier instead. Because uh, metagel has a much faster cooldown. A much faster cooldown. And that's important. Okay, now all the collectors are neutralized. Take out the scion. And we're almost home free. Alright, you'll see there Thane got hit. He's in the red. So this does happen. Your squad mates do take hits. Gotcha. Uh, now you'll see here something else that's funny. And another reason why the avalanche is so good. If you freeze the collectors before Harbinger appears from one. If Harbinger does spawn from a frozen disabled collector. He is frozen and disabled as Harbinger. Just like you saw there. And uh, so yeah. This uh, segment is actually completed and looked almost laughably easy, didn't it? Well, it can be, and that's hopefully what you'll take away from this. This section is much less scary once you know how to deconstruct the threats and, and deal with them one at a time. But don't be fooled. Things can still go wrong. Things can get hairy in a, in a hurry if certain things happen, and so we'll go over that right now. Here are your combat priorities in the platform section. Number one, avoid the Scion shots. Avoid the Scion blasts, and if you do get hit by one, immediately metagel. And that's because, as most of you probably know, the Scion shots do kill your shields and keep them down. So you want to Metagel immediately to get your shield back. This comes from the emergency shielding upgrade, where Metagel or using Unity gives you your shield back and your squad mates' shields back as well. Number two, keep Harbinger disabled, because he can destroy you and your squad mates in a hurry if he's not disabled. So if Kasumi dies, revive her immediately. So keep an eye on your squad mates, keep an eye on their health, and if they die, if Kasumi dies, get her back immediately. Because if she dies, your method of keeping Harbinger disabled dies with her. And you could find yourself in trouble in a hurry if you need Flashbang Grenade and you can't get it because she died. Number four, disable the collectors, like you saw. Use the avalanche for that. And lastly, of course, kill them all. So there we have it. That is the Collectorship Mission platforming section. And hopefully it's going to be a lot less scary for you guys with whatever class you play.